She doesn't speak much, but her talent roars when they perform. She regularly used to release music, but now her fans have been wondering about her whereabouts as she hasn't released anything for nearly a decade. Hello everyone and welcome to our YouTube channel. Are you also wondering where did a powerhouse performer like Tracy Chapman vanish? Then fret not today, we are here to discuss what happened to Tracy Chapman. Before we get started, don't forget to like, comment, and share. Also, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you'll never miss any updates. Early Life Tracy Chapman was born on the 30th of March 1964 in Ohio. Her parents separated when she was four, and she was then raised by her mother. They were extremely poor and received welfare to bear their expenses. She lived in quite a rough neighborhood and was often at the receiving end of bullying and racism. They received money that was barely enough to buy the necessities like food, hence they couldn't afford to go to school. But one day, a miracle happened, and Tracy got a scholarship. This was the beginning of the series of fortunate events which will become her life. She shared her memory of the whole experience in an interview. I was really fortunate to receive a scholarship to a boarding school in Connecticut when I was a teenager. I was taken out of a very dangerous neighborhood and a challenging school environment and given an opportunity to go to college. That was something I'd always dreamed of as a child, not something I expected to happen without difficulty because my mother was raising me and my sister on her own and we were poor, to put it bluntly. There was no money for school. So that's when I felt like, oh, okay, I have a chance at making my way in this world and being able to take care of myself. Beginning to a glorious career. Tracy didn't waste the chance and focused all her energies on getting good grades. Her hard work was rewarded when she got admission in Tufts University. She was always inclined towards music. This was also encouraged by her mother, who bought her a ukulele when she was three. In university, she gained more confidence as a performer and started singing in front of an audience. She then told a website how music had always been a around her, it was a pleasant part of her childhood. I love books, I love reading, and I basically grew up in a public library. I've always loved poetry, music, and always in the house, there was such a range of different music around. My mother sang, my sister could sing, music was so much in the fabric of my life and upbringing. First Album in one such event, another student of Tufts University, Brian Koppelman, heard her singing and asked his father, who was the head of a record label, to listen to her. Soon after her graduation, he got her signed to another huge label, Elektra Records. In 1988, Tracy released her self-titled album. Her soulful voice and mature songwritings instantly made her critics' favorite. Right from the first album, they started calling her the legend in the making. Rolling Stones wrote about her. You could start with the fact that Tracy Chapman is a stunning debut, a collection of songs that sketch the lives of the disenfranchised with vivid clarity and bluntly insist that a change had better come. Iconic Performance in Wembley Tracy is an extremely shy person, but there is no denying the fact that she is the most vivacious performer. After her debut release, she was set to perform at Nelson Mandela's 70th birthday tribute concert in Wembley. She was finalized to perform only one set, but then another musician refused to perform and she ended up performing two sets. That performance is considered as one of the best live acts ever. She sang her track Fast Cars in the concert and soon after its popularity grew. It then went on to peak at number 6 on the Billboard Hot 100. Rolling Stone ranked the song as 167th position on their 2010 list of the 500 greatest songs of all time. It was the highest ranking song on the list that was both written and performed by a female artist. She was a fairly new artist when she gave that iconic Wembley performance. Everyone was calling her natural, but Tracy had her apprehensions. With wide acclaim came stardom, and oddly enough, she wasn't ready for that. In an interview, she said why she wasn't suited for fame. I have this personality that is a bit on the reserve side and which had never really sought out the limelight. That has made me perhaps not the ideal person for this job. Successful Journey Tracy is one of those few acclaimed artists whose debut album became an instant classic. Her song, Fast Car, is regularly featured on the best songs list even after so many decades of its release. Although her first album was a hit, it was her fourth album, New Beginnings, which had the song Give Me One Reason, which made her a living legend. It is her most successful single to date. Tracy Chapman's career is full of glorious classics that many artists can only dream of. In her three decades long career, she she won four Grammy Awards, when in 2015 she was going through music to release an album of her timeless classics. For the first time, she listened to each and every song so carefully. In every interview of hers, she is asked how her songs remain so fresh and generations after generations connect to them. 
Her answer was, I'm really flattered to hear you say that. All I can say is that there are some themes that are timeless. There are some concerns that are universal. Everyone wants to be loved and everyone wants to feel like they belong somewhere in the world. Everyone wants to do something and feel like they have a sense of purpose. These are just the things that I think about and the things that make their way into my songwriting. Sampling and Lawsuit over the years, so many people have tried to sample Chapman's song, but she is fiercely protective of her music. She doesn't permit anyone to sample her song. Many artists have tried to convince her. They even offered her a hefty sum. But as anyone can guess by Tracy's personality, she is not a sellout. In recent times, she only gave Lena Dunham permission to use one of her songs. That permission she gave after talking to her for 10 minutes. Her passion was what made her give the permission. Since then, many other artists have tried, but they've got no luck. In 2018, Tracy sued rapper Nicki Minaj for sampling her song, Give Me One Reason. The lawsuit claimed Nicki's team contacted Chapman's team to ask for permission, but like many before her, Ms. Chapman simply denied it. They even convinced her to meet Nicki, but again, Tracy showed no interest. They still went on and sampled her classic. The song was never released, but it got played in a radio show once or twice, which is why Nicki had to pay a fine of $450,000. Love and Partners Chapman is extremely protective of her personal life, which is why not much is known about her love life. She never openly disclosed her sexual orientation, but writer Alice Walker once told that she and Chapman were in a romantic relationship during the mid-1990s. She has never, ever talked about who she's seeing or even what kind of person she would like in her life. She writes songs that have talked about real stuff from women empowerment to racism. She pours her heart out in her art, and then she doesn't like to indulge in any sort of frivolous conversation. She thinks being guarded protects her art because she can then show her vulnerability via her songs, which is the best medium according to her. She told in an interview, I think it's obvious it's really important to me. You need to keep something for yourself. As a writer, I feel that even more strongly. I feel like I need to be able to freely observe the world. That's the way I like to move through the world. I don't need to be the focus of attention. If I am, it impairs my ability to write and do what I do. Social Activism Tracy was exposed to the ugly reality of society in her childhood. She faced bullying and racism, which made her think and question. She started noticing human behavior and often asked thought-provoking questions. Her being famous has little to do with her charity work. Tracy thinks she would have been involved in community building even if she wasn't famous. Even if I don't have this public personality, I feel like it's important for everyone, in whatever way they choose, to be engaged in the world. My boarding school's motto was, from each according to ability and to each according to need. I guess I was influenced by it, although I think I had some of that in me before I arrived. As a value, it's one that's really important to me. She is one of those gems who have not been corrupted by the music industry. She still works for many organizations, be it creating schools for the less fortunate or perform to raise funds for AIDS awareness. Chapman feels like being a humanitarian is her true calling. She was lucky people also liked her music. But as much as she loves it, she will never get used to the fame, which comes with the success. In an interview, her charity work is the only thing where she'll talk with some fervor. Recently, she showed gratitude to all the charities who reach out to her and involve her in their noble initiatives. I'm fortunate that I've been able to do my work and be involved in certain organizations, certain endeavors, and offered some assistance in some way. Whether that is about raising money or helping to raise awareness, just being another body to show some force and conviction for a particular idea, finding out where the need is, and if someone thinks you're going to be helpful, then helping. Artists like her don't ask for it, but they are the ones who earn our respect. If only today's celebrities could learn a thing or two about humility from Ms. Chapman. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to get the notifications. Also, don't forget to watch our other videos on this channel that explores more topics like this.